ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها الحديث الثاني عشر We're now going to go into the twelfth hadith which is what? The third hadith for the fourth chapter عن أنس رضي الله تعالى عنه This hadith is going to be about um, the walima the wedding the wedding ceremony when um, when getting married inshallah ta'ala an anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala qadima abdul rahman ibn awf al madina anas ibn malik he said abdul rahman ibn awf came to medina fa akha an nabiy sallallahu alayhi wasallam baynahu wa bayna sa'd ibn rabi' al ansari the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he bonded placed brotherhood between Abdul Rahman ibn Awf and Sa'id sorry Sa'ad ibn Rabi' al Ansari. So when the Prophet ﷺ said, because as you all know, when the Muhajireen came from Mecca and they came to what? They came to Medina. They left everything. Taraku diyarahum wa amwalahum. Hatta they even left their, some of them left their children behind. So they came to Medina with nothing in hand. So what the Prophet ﷺ did was place one Ansari with a Muhajir. In order to, in order to, to find a place to stay, what to, you know, pay attention here, Wallahi, you're going to be amazed. So everyone, one person with another, another one with another. From the two that were bonded between the two of them was Abdul Rahman ibn Awf and Sa'ad ibn Rabi' al-Ansari. Look what Sa'ad said to his brother Abdul Rahman. He said to him, I have money and I have a wife. Or wives. I have two wives. So he said to him, I'm going to divide my wealth into half. I'm going to give you half, but I'll keep wife. Half. As for my wives, I've got two wives. Choose whichever one of those you want. That amazed me, Wallah. That amazed me, the brotherhood between these two Sahabis. The love they had for one another. فقال عبد الرحمن And now what even amazed me more? The brotherhood of Sa'ad towards his brother, I mean the love, hub of Sa'ad to Abd al-Rahman amazed me. But what even amazed me more is the wara of Abd al-Rahman uh, ibn Awf radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said to him, when he said that to him, he said, Barakallahu laka fi ahalik. May Allah bless you in your family and your wealth, wa malika in your wealth. Dulluni, show me. Dulluni, show me. Ala suqi, show me the market. I want to know where to make money. Where's the market? That's why I wanted to go to the market, is to make money, to trade a business. فَرَبِحَ شَيْئًا مِنْ أَقَطٍ وَسَمْنٍ Abd Rahman ibn Awf, he found dry yogurt and butter for a very cheap price and he sold it for it. He added money onto it and he sold it. And he started to trade that. Are you with me? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Abdul Rahman ibn Awf. فَرَآهُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بَعْدَ أَيَّامٍ The Prophet saw him days after. وَعَلَيْهِ وَضَرٌ مِّن سُفْرَةٍ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him and he had yellow stains on him. زعفران. Yeah? فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ The Prophet, he said to him, the Prophet said to him, عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَسَلَمْ مَهْيَمْ Meaning, this means, what is that? Ya Abdul Rahman, what is this? Qala ya Rasulullah tazawajtu. He said, oh, Messenger of Allah, I got married. Imra'atan min al-Ansari. I married a woman from the people of Ansar. Abdul Rahman is what? He's a muhajir, right? Who is he marrying? This is how they were towards one another. The Prophet then, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَمَا سُقْتَ فِيهَا how much mehr was she? How much mehr did you give? 
فَقَالَ وَزْنُ نَوَاتٍ مِّنْ دَهَبٍ I, I gave one date stone of gold. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet then said to him, أَوْ لِمْ وَلَوْ بِشَاتٍ The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, offer a banquet. Even with one sheep. Now what we don't want you to think is that it's a condition, there has to be a shat at least. Because oh lim is a fi'il amr. And we don't want to go into that technical, because this series is not meant to be technical ahkam and whatnot. Huh? It's just so everyone can understand. Oh lim, even though it's a command, some of the fuqaha said no, it's not. It's not lil wujub, it's not wajib. And a lot, of the, a lot of the scholars, they said that is wajib. There has to be a wala walima. Wajib, because the Prophet commanded Abdul Rahman Ma'af. He said, oh lim wala bishatin. So there's a khilaf amongst the fuqaha regarding that. Like in ha, tarjih, right now, I mean, which one is of those strongest and whatnot, is not what our series is about. And the fact that we already know people are going to do a walima regardless. People are going to do it. They like it anyways. But it's a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The minimum of force. If you take his wajib, then it's higher. But it's not a shart. It's not a condition. In the walima, kawnuha min min lahmin. There doesn't have, doesn't have to be, there doesn't have to be meat necessarily there. It doesn't have to be. But what it is, is ala qadrin istita'a, based on your ability and what you're able to do. Because the Prophet ﷺ, his marriage of Safiya bin Tuhuyay was what? كانت حيسة من أقط وتمر وسمنين وسمنين sorry. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's marriage of Safiya bin Tuhuyay was what? It was just dry yogurt, dates, and butter. The Prophet ﷺ. Also, it is permissible for people to help you. Because Safiya bin Tuhiyya's wedding, she brought what she could, and the Prophet ﷺ brought what he could, and that's how it happened. So it's permissible for both parties to help one another. In the Asian community, who does the walima? The man does it. What is the other one that you do? Ruqsati. The woman does it. Ah, ajeeb. In our culture, ar is bad. The man brings everything. Yeah. Somali community, the man brings everything. He does, he does the wedding, he does the uh, everything. So it's upon him. The Asian community, they, they're good in that regard. So <laughs> they're good like that. <laughs> But what we want to take from this hadith is that there is no condition for meat. It's based on your ability. It can be a hundred pounds, it can be a thousand pounds. If it, but because the Sharia has spoken about the issue of Islaf. And the ayah, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُولَةً إِلَىٰ عُنُقِكَ وَلَا تَبْسُطْحَ كُلَّ الْبَصْطِ فَتَقْعُدَ مَلُومًا Don't open your hand too much and don't close it too much. The believer is always of that one. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا The believers are like that. Ibadur Rahman, Allah has mentioned in them. They don't give too much that they don't have nothing for their own wives and kids. People go f do weddings إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَىٰ رَاجِعُونَ And they spend so much in the wedding that later when they get together after that wedding is done, they go home, the man can't even buy his wife food f the, for that day. He's got nothing in his pocket. Finished. He, all his money is gone. Or the man is put in debt for that wedding. That's not right. That is not right. Because you know what you have to understand, sister, is you're going to suffer with him in this financial crisis. You are going to suffer with him. You've got a husband who's stressed out. You've got a husband who's not financially well off. Trying to impress others that my wedding was so big. But then you what? You end up home with a husband who has nothing. And you don't have nothing to eat, you have no money after that. Ala kulli hal, the Sharia urges 
that a wedding is done, a walima is done. Does the walima have to be after or can it be before? This hadith explained it to us. Because the fuqaha, they differed. Some fuqaha said it's before, it has to be done before. Some said it, can, it has to be after. Some said if, it's, if, the, if he's already got married to her, then the walima, he, um, it's not sunnah for him to do. The hadith of Abdul Rahman ibn Awf showed that he was already married. And the Prophet said to him, O lim walo bishatin. So even if you're married and you're together, you can still do a walima. You can still what? You can still do a walima. If you're of the opinion that it's wajib to do the walima, then of course you, the, the wujub doesn't drop. And that you have to do it. Also what it shows you is that also the qadiya and the issue that scholars talk about is the issue of i'lan. Announcing it and making it out in the open. Did the Prophet ﷺ know Abdul Rahman ibn Awf got married? Huh? They didn't know. You see? So what's the what's the labid for Ilan announcing? All of that is Masail fiqhiyah that we're not gonna We're not gonna go into it. We're not gonna go into it. The last inshallah ta'ala hadith, uh, which is the thirteenth hadith, and it's the last hadith for the fourth chapter is beautification for the woman for her husband on the wedding day. Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he spoke about fi zawadiya Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi Safiya bint Huyay. Anas radiallahu anhu, he spoke about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's marriage to Safiya bint Huyay. Umm al-Mu'minina, the mother of the believers. Radhi Allah ta'ala anha, may Allah be pleased with her. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he freed Safiya bin Tuhuyay. It's called a manumission. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he manumitted her, radhi Allah ta'ala anha. Then he married her. And her marriage was based on the what? The manumission. The freeing of Safiya. That was how he married her. فَقَالَ لَهُ ثَابِتٌ ثَابِتٌ مَوْلَى أَنَسْ أَنَسْ سَلَيْفْ بُوي said to Anas ibn Malik يَا أَبَا حَمْزَ مَا أَصْدَقَهَا what was the dowry the Prophet gave to her قَالَ نَفْسَهَا her dowry was her nafs he mean he freed her and then he married her عليه الصلاة والسلام حتى إذا كان بالطريق he was in he was on his on his on his way صلى الله وسلم عليه Umm Sulaim took Safiya bin Tuhuyay from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she prepared her, she beautified her, she worked on her. فَأَهْدَتْهَا لَهُ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ And she brought him to the Prophet, she brought Safiya to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at night. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became a Arus Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Um, he, uh, he became married that night to her. Then the Prophet ﷺ said to the companions, because he didn't have nothing, alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, Man kana indahu shay'un Anyone who has anything to eat or anything, can you please bring it. وَبَسَطَ نِطَعًا And the cloth was spread. فَجَعَلَ الرَّجُلُ يَجِيءُ بِالتَّمْرِ huh? One man, would, he went and he brought dates. وَجَعَلَ الرَّجُلُ يَجِيءُ بِالسَّمْنِ Another one came and he brought refined, uh, refined uh, uh, butter. وَأَحْسِبُهُ قَدْ ذَكَرَ السُّوَيْقَ And another one he went and he brought uh, food and stuff. فَكَانَتْ وَلِيمَةُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ The Prophet ﷺ's walima, it became like this. So this hadith shows us the mashru'iyya, the permissibility of تَجْهِيزُ النِّسَاءِ لِلْمَرَى Tajheezun Nisa, the preparation that a woman can put into another woman. Tajheezun Nisa ilil Mara wa Tajmili Hali Zojiha. That another woman can beautify another woman for her husband. But, Ma'a Mura'at al Dawabid Shari'ah. The principles of the Sharia have to be observed. Now, this Dawabid Shari'ah that, that have to be observed. That has to be looked at is that, of course, Adam ala ma la illa zawj, 
She can't say, oh, I'm going to beautify you. And then she looks at parts of her body that isn't allowed for her. The woman is not allowed to. And of course, she can't, a man can't even do it, asalatan. He's not allowed to do it. Also, she's not allowed to do things that are haram, like placing extensions on the woman's hair and fake nails. She can't place on her things that are haram shar'an, such as plucking the eyebrows. Plucking the eyebrows. Is she allowed, for example, if she's an old woman and she's getting married and she's got white hair, is she allowed to color her hair and change the color? The Jumhur al ulama are of the opinion, no. But fihi man abah, and there are those who permitted it. Also, the man has to make sure he looks good as well. If you're getting married that day, look sharp, look beautiful, look amazing. Because Umm um Al-Mu'minina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, in Sahih Muslim, she said, بِأَيِّ شَيْءٍ كَانَ يَبْدَأُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِذَا دَخَلَ بَيْتَهُ And this is the problem we have. And it's a reality. It's a truth. That a man doesn't really care about his appearance when he's in the house. He looks all scuff, scuffy. You know, he'll stay in the house all day without brushing his teeth. You see, he won't look sharp in his own house. The minute he wants to go out of the house, boom, he looks different. The same with the woman. All day she looks raggedy, she looks uh, unappealing. She has, she's been called out for a wedding, A'udhu Billah. She looks different. Her husband starts desiring her now. She gets rid of everything, she, gets, she makes her, herself look good. But before that, what happened? She looks like there, babysitter. Well, as if did. And the same is with the brother. Same with the brother. You know, he doesn't brush his teeth, he doesn't look after how he is. You know, he's wearing the pajamas all day in the house. You see, he, uh, he sleeps with his socks on at night and not changing them. Yeah? Sorry? That's a reality. And Abdullah ibn Abbas said, I like to beautify myself for my wife the way I like her to beautify herself for me. So this is a, and this hadith in Sahih Muslim, in hadith Aisha, the Prophet ﷺ, when he entered the house, Aisha was asked, what is it that he used to start with? Look what she, look what she said. The Prophet ﷺ used to start what? He used to start with, كَانَ يَبْدَأُ بِالسِّوَاكِ He used to start with, with the siwak. He would brush his teeth, alayhi salatu wasalam, smell nice, alayhi salatu wasalam. So it is a sunnah when you enter the house to brush your teeth, to wash your hands. You see, to come across clean and cleanse, cleansy for your spouse, your wife. Also, this issue of ahkamu zina, this issue of beautification, what is permissible? Are you with me? Ahkamu zina, zina tul mar'ah, what is permissible for a woman to do? How can she beautify herself? The do's and the don'ts, sahih? Um, is she allowed to? do an implant, for instance, if she's had so many kids. She's had so many kids for her husband, got stretch marks. She wants to now go and um, she wants to do an uh, operation and she wants to get herself back together again. Is she allowed to do it? You see, liposuction as they call it. What's the ruling regarding that? This is inshallah ta'ala a series that I'm going to do. بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ the ahkam of beautification for the woman. Anything which I have said that was wrong, فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ بَرِئَانِ مِنْهُ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِحَمْدِكَ أَشْهَدُ أَلَّا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَتُوبِ لَي